edition of Airwaves, another successful step in the Navy's push to go green. Plus, students get a crash test course in engineering. And remembering the Battle of Midway, a salute to the heroes of this important World War II victory. We're navigating the news of NAVAIR. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Prue. And I'm Senior Chief Richard Hanager. Thank you for joining us. Now to the latest step in the Navy's push for the Great Green Fleet. An MH-60 Seahawk is the first to fly on a 50-50 blend of algae-based and petroleum-based biofuel. This is the first successful biofuel flight using the algae-based blend. It flew last year using a Camelina seed-based blend. Biofuel testing will continue with additional aircraft this year. The Navy hopes to approve the 50-50 biofuel and petroleum blend for use in ships and aircraft by 2012. NES Patuxent River played host to another successful Meet the Fleet event, this time with the crew of the USS Lincoln Strike Group. The ships returned home in March following a six-month deployment in the Western Pacific. Leadership from the Lincoln Strike Group shared some of the challenges and successes of the recent mission. The open forum helps NAVAIR employees understand their vital role, how to better assist the fleet in the future. You know, I think it's important, uh, at least in the unclassed version, for people that work here to kind of get an idea of what we do, just in general terms. You can read about it in the papers, you can see it on CNN or Fox News, uh, but to kind of follow one group around and what they're doing, how they get there, a, a general flight day, that sort of thing, I think provides better insight, uh, and with that insight, you could be a little, uh, a little, you know, the support could be better. USS Lincoln Strike Group is based in Everett, Washington. To see the full Meet the Fleet video, contact Navier Public Affairs at 301-757-1487. Inspiring the scientists and engineers of tomorrow. That's the mission of STEM, an educational outreach program pulling kids out of the classroom for some on-the-job training. Recently, students paired up with engineers at Patuxent River to complete the Bulletproof Survivability Contest. The goal is to encourage student interest in technology-related careers. This project was actually pretty it was kind of hard because we had to think of a really good design, but it was really fun building it and it was really fun seeing it being tested. With the hands-on activities, it's a lot better because you get to learn faster and it's just more interesting to do. They're taking away from us the process, the systems engineering process at a very basic level, which some of the kids have come back and told us, I can use that process in almost everything else I do. The Crash Survivability Test is just one of the many programs students enjoy throughout the year. To see more about the STEM program and other top stories, visit the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil backslash news. High school students aren't the only ones having fun with science this summer. Dozens of young engineers took part in the first robotic competition at NAS Patuxent River. The challenge isn't so much about winning the game, but learning a few lessons along the way. It takes a long time and a lot of troubleshooting to build a successful robot. We all had about a month, five weeks maybe, to build, design, program these robots from existing kits with a specified list of extra parts and perform the tasks um, set up on the field. This year's challenge is to um, have the robot cross certain obstacles, collect some batons, and then score them in uh, a certain goal. That is not a very easy task to accomplish. The challenge also has a 60 second autonomous period where the robot has to do everything on its own and then a two minute remote control period where two drivers will actually be able to control the robot and, um, and try to accomplish the task that way. In everything we do here at NAVAIR, we have got to understand what the set of requirements are and how to innovate to meet those requirements. You can't do that without teams. You can't do that without having a good a dialogue with folks, conflicting ideas, and figuring out what the best approach is. We spent a lot of hours together, um, some almost all night, uh, building, testing, um, getting used to driving together, interacting together. We tried very hard to make it the most competitive robot that we could and the time allotted with the resources given. Generally you assume bigger robots are more complicated, bigger challenge. That's not necessarily true. These little FTC robots can be immensely complicated and difficult to build. With robots, they never do the same thing twice the same way. So when we're in control, we can control the different aspects and, and 
uh, recover if there's anything that's not right. But when the robot is on its own, it's really a hit or miss. Three, two, one, go! Well, the way it started, nobody scored in the first four matches at all, batons. Uh, they just scored by balancing on the bridge in the end, which is an easy task if you can get on the bridge to begin with. But by the end of the day, teams had adapted to the environment who were able to do not just balancing on the bridge, but also getting batons wherever they could. Career-wise, this is just a really good networking opportunity, uh, team building, especially with as many ESTPs as we have on base. Uh, it just helps you get basically in touch with all the other competencies. The hardest thing had to be getting everyone to work together and getting enough time to build the robot. So we had ideas, we had concepts, we just didn't have enough time. Uh, working full time and doing this after work and getting everyone's schedules to work out was not easy. Raise it, we'll flip. We want to lower it. Points are key. Uh, competition is good. But more importantly, it's about getting folks to uh, begin teaming, understanding what teams are, set a focus, a series of goals on what they're trying to achieve, and fundamentally beginning the networking for a lot of them to understand who they work with and how do they work together to meet that common goal. A team from Lakehurst partnered with a team from Patuxent River to win the competition. This year marks the 69th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Gary Ruffhead, took part in the wreath-laying ceremony at the Naval Memorial in Washington, D.C. Seven surviving veterans were recognized for their courage and sacrifice during this historic battle. I, I think it's nice that they, they remember what went on at Midway. It, it really was a turning point of the war. The, the enemy forces had their way at Pearl Harbor and, and the Philippines, and. If we would have lost this engagement, we would have been really in, in a bad way. I was the navigator at Midway. The Marines, as you know, got hit early that morning uh, by the Japanese, and a, a number of them were killed, and a number of them were injured. And uh, we flew am the ammunition out to them the same day, and then we brought wounded back. Admiral Ruffhead proclaimed June 3rd as Battle of Midway Commemoration Day. The American victory changed the course of the Pacific Campaign during World War II. That's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.